Today I'll be discussing an interesting case uh, which presented to a primary care physician. He was treated um, and then his symptoms did not uh, improve and after that on evaluation he was found to have something else for what he was being treated as. So this is how usually a case of ankyovasculitis is present as. So this gentleman, uh, 25 year old, he presented with history of fever, cough and breathlessness. He had hemoptysis. X-ray showed lung shadows, he had fever and then generally at a primary care level what we do is uh, treat the patient as uh, pulmonary cox. So he started receiving treatment as pulmonary cox. After few days his symptoms did not improve and then he started having oligoanuria at which point of time he was referred to me. So he was thought to have uh, drug induced renal failure and then uh, he was referred to a nephrologist. So here on evaluation what he had was he had proteinuria and uh, uh, when he presented to me he had generalized edema, um, oligoanuria, his creatinine of around 5 or 6, he had to be initiated on dialysis. And then after the initiation of dialysis then when renal biopsy was done it showed crescentic uh, glomerulonephritis and it was um, Anka vasculitis. Anka, C. Anka came positive and he was treated with rituximab and after a few sessions of dialysis and then with treatment steroids and rituximab, he, his general condition has improved. It's been two years now, he has been off dialysis and he has been on regular follow up. What I would like to tell here is that even when this gentleman presented to the primary care physician with history of fever, cough and breathlessness and then hemoptysis, his creatinine was normal at that point of time but he had significant proteinuria and hematuria. So this is the point which we have to note but at that point of time that simple urine routine was not given much importance and then he was started on uh, antidepressant treatment. 2-3 months into treatment he started developing other symptoms of renal failure and he was thought to have drug induced renal failure. But the point to be noted here is that Anka vasculitis that is anka associated vasculitis presents as just like any other vasculitis present in a subtle way and it is very common than uh, we expect generally what we, we are taught in primary medical school is that rare diagnoses are rarely correct and we were being taught that vasculitis is a very rare entity and it is not like that and majority of indians who present with uh, renal failure uh, sorry with fever cough and hemoptysis are generally tuberculosis unless proved otherwise but it is not so always make sure we have to rule out other causes of fever cold cough and all that because even vasculitis presents in a similar way as tuberculosis many times and i myself have seen not less than 15 20 patients where patients were diagnosed as pulmonary cough and they ultimately turned out to be vasculitis Treating very early is very important in such cases. P uh, patient was treated with rituximab in this particular case along with initial pumping him with steroids and after that he has been doing alright. But had we diagnosed him earlier, he might not have gone into all this uh, situation where he had to suffer for 2-3 months. So urine routine, a simple examination should not be ignored and always we should Keep vasculitis as one of the cause for presentation of pulmonary renal syndrome. Whenever there is pulmonary involvement as well as renal involvement in the form of proteinuria, hematuria, we have to keep pulmonary renal syndromes as a part of our as a differential diagnosis. Luckily, he had anka vasculitis. Anka vasculitis response to treatment, but if at all it had it been anti-GVM, anti-glomerular basement membrane disease. And nearing dialysis, they rarely revert, they rarely come off dialysis because anti-GVM is one kind of disease where requirement of dialysis is uh, shows that there is significant amount of renal damage and they are non-reversible. So in this particular case what we have learned was urine routine is important, urine routine which was done previously was ignored and proteinuria and hematuria signifies that there is a glomerular involvement. And pulmonary renal involvement, pulmonary hemorrhage, fever, cough, hemoptysis suggests that we have to consider vasculitis as a part of our differential and try to find if at all it is vasculitis and not just treat somebody as having pulmonary cox 
as it was done in this particular gentleman's case. He had to be dialyzed, she underwent renal biopsy and now he is off dialysis. Uh, we have been giving him uh, rituximab once in a while. We monitor CD19 levels when we are giving rituximab and once the CD19 level is more than 1%, Try to keep uh, CD19 levels at less than 1%. If it is more than 1%, then we again give the patient rituximab. Along with rituximab, he has been on various other drugs, steroids. He has been on tapering dose of steroids. And he is on a minuscule dose of steroids right now. He is on deflazacord, 6 mg per day. And he is doing absolutely fine. He also has been on few antihypertensives which he is taking right now. But his overall, he is doing fine. So this is about ankyl vasculitis. Thank you.